Hello, I'm Brian Lacey. Welcome to the One Punch Challenge, where each week our guests will compete on this machine to see who truly hits the hardest. The rules are simple. You get three goes. The highest score goes on our leaderboard, and the top of the leaderboard, the winner, will claim our inaugural One Punch Challenge belt. This time, this week on the uh, One Punch Challenge, we're welcoming Scotland's own The Hammer, Mr. Robert Whiteford. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm good, my friend. Nice to see you. Let's get business straight on the way. I don't, even get, I don't even get a free shot. No free shots. You're going to start here. This is your next opponent. Let's this see what you got. This used to be like a Friday night out in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> three punch at somebody, that's what it used to yeah. be like. So I'll go, I'll go right handy first. You're going right handy yeah, then, okay. Right -handed. Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> oh. ah. Brad doesn't like it. Seven, eight. Not bad. Eight, three, eight. So grab it. Oh, that's cheeky as well, mate. So look, Rob, mm -hmm. eight, three, eight's your first score. Happy with that? What did Brad get? Brad, well, Mark Diacasey scored eight, nine, six. Right. So right now. Not far off. Not of the far detail. off. And that was Consid your right hand. And considering he's about 20 kilo heavier than that. That's good. So look, Rob, uh, going to ask you a little bit about your background. Growing up in Scotland, you grew up between Edinburgh and Glasgow, right? right between the, the two yeah, cities. Right. Set, 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 so if I go to Glasgow, they think I'm from Edinburgh. If I go to Edinburgh, they think I'm from Glasgow. So I'm like, anywhere I go, I always get trouble with it, no matter where you go. <laughs> so it was weird. I've got an accent and nobody understands. And what's, what was it like growing up there? I mean, what, what drew you to martial arts? I suppose just when you're young, it depends what type of character you're is, but you're always fighting when you're young. Well, I was as a boy. Uh, didn't matter who it was, girls or boys when you were growing up, it didn't make a difference, did it? You, if there was a bigger girl at primary school, you were fighting with her, if there was another boy, you were fighting her, so it didn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, and then it was either just football or fighting, and if you played football, you ended up fighting in the park anyway, because something would happen, so I suppose it's just a part of growing up, isn't it? Where I was from anyway, so I don't know, but people at Bradkin, he was spoon-fed when he was growing up. So. <laughs> Silver I, don't, I honestly don't know how he get any fighting, but yeah, if you come from Scotland, you know how to fight anyway. I can see Brad over your shoulder, he's absolutely seething. I won't, we won't go too much on the playground stuff because he's had a little accident with his Lego today. Oh, so right. we're going to. He's uh, not actually told me about that. No, he's not mentioned that his, all of his Lego is broken. Don't speak about the Lego collection that is ruined. It's ruined. If people follow me anywhere, they're all my. It's ruined. I'm hurt right now. Listen, well, let's get your second one. You're going to go right and left handed, is yeah. this right? Because I've seen you knock some, some people out with your left hand. That, yeah. that, Knocked out. Whoa. More people than you. <laughs> One punch. <laughs> uh, right, I'll go right hook this time. Okay. Just, uh, just to keep with the right hand, then I'll finish with the left. Okay. So I'll not take a run up if you ever notice me. Right taxi to run to the other side of the wall. Oh, okay. come on. The sound is come on. Sometimes the sound is That's still. good. A six. Oh, eight. Not bad for a hook. Eight, seven, two. Not bad for a hook. Not bad for a hook. Standing hook, no run-ups, Brad. No run-ups on this one. Oh, foot up. Listen. Uh, so I'm going to ask you about this because I saw you tweet about it. The, the, the boxing bout between Taylor and Catterall. Mm. The judging on that, I mean, it's been investigated by the police now. I mean, what's, what were your thoughts on that? You in this put me in a spot here because I'm for Scot Scotland <laughs> and it was a champion. It was had all the belts and was fighting. But for... A neutral point of view, it looked like Catterall won the fight. I can remember watching It's not very often I stay up to watch a boxing fight or pay for a fight. Boxing especially. Uh, was it the gloves are off they done, the build yeah. up all week. So I got into the fight uh, and I can remember watching it, paid for it, sitting with a girlfriend. Uh, she was up for it as well. She was enjoying it. Good fight. She picked, we always go pick rounds, see who's going to win. I think she picked the sixth round. And when they started the fight and Catterall started landing the cleaner shots, I thought, he's beating him easily here, mm. like Josh is having to force the fight, and he's having to work harder to get nothing out of the rounds, it seemed like he was stealing the rounds, Carter. Mm. Uh, then they took a point off Carter, I think it was, uh, yeah. what was that for, was it, for pulling the head down for some, started taking points, anyway, I thought, because it's in Scotland and Josh is a champion, he's from England, I thought, they're going to score this a draw, just by taking the point off Carter, mm. I thought, the only way they can bring this fight back to this, Josh has give it a draw. Then they took a point off Josh. 
and I thought they're actually just going to rob Carter of the full fight. They've evened it out here, and they're wow. going to say he won the scorecards. Yeah. And I can remember them reading it, and I thought, Jesus, what, what's going on here? Yeah, and I think you could tell everybody's reaction, even the Scottish crowd, and they thought their homeboy had lost. Wow. So MMA judging as well. Let's talk about that because there's always that that cliche, that saying, never leave it in the hands yeah, of the I've done judges. Yeah, myself, and I've lost split decisions before. Which is money as well, yeah, right? Money as well. Uh, it's easier said than done sometimes. Mm. But you should also, as a competitor and a professional fighter, you should think you should be able to leave it because it's their job. You're going in there fighting as a professional doing your yeah. job. You're not going in there fighting as an amateur. You're supposed to be professional judges and some of them are judging like amateurs. It's, there should be some critique or they should be held responsible to their decisions because it affects fighters' livelihoods, it affects their career trajectory. Can affect a lot of things. I think they should be held more accountable to the decisions they're making. What would you change? As I said, I, I think there should be a more criteria to the judges and who gets picked and who gets allocated. Uh, and I think they should be under scrutiny all the time if you're slipping. Accountable. Just like a fighter yeah. kind of gets older and he starts losing fights. The same way a judge, he could be getting older and start seeing less things that he should be seeing as a younger guy and not paying him much, much, much attention. I think they should just be judged in every fight and reviewed every time. Maybe every time's a wee bit harsh, but let's say they come out with like a controversial decision. Like that. Let's review him, see how he's been. Let's look at his last fight, see how he's judged him. Yeah. And if we're seeing anything creep up, let's change something about it. Either bring him down the level of competition he's judging a fight mm. and, and change that up or get him to then look at fights and somebody sit with him and say, this is what you should be looking for. This is the rule set, what you're looking at. I, th I just think they should be more more scrutiny on them, their decisions. I think they should be held accountable a wee bit more. Would you like to see more ex-fighters move into judging and refereeing? Not that old, but... Uh... Well, he's 50... What are you, 56 <laughs> next week? Next month? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you back. Don't would, you, would you like to see more fighters moving into... It's a, it's a hard one, because... Oh, he's... Oh, look, look at Just that. Just look. Hey. look. Look at that. Tied and ready. It's like he knows you, mate. It's like he knows you. Come on. It's not very, not very good day. Come listen, on. listen, we've got to wipe this way. Let's get the next punch up. But what I want you to do, you've, you've trained with Rob. You're now moving into the coach. I want you to give him a, a, like a mid-round talk, all right? Well, well, if you do not get with his right hand, the people don't know he's actually left-handed. So why don't you try and punch him with your left hand? That's like, right. But this, this is, is for Scotland he, as well, he's Rob. A, he's a tough fighter, but he's sometimes he's not the smartest. I think he's only just worked out that he's not hitting with a stronger hand. You're not the boss of me. I'm the boss of you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, Rob. Oh. Right. right. Look, Mark Casey called you out. He got eight, nine, six. Let's go! Come on! That felt weak. Oh! Oh! oh. Hey. oh don't film that. Hey. Don't film that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, well, that's, mate, that's wait, your wait, best wait, shot. Wait, wait. Yeah, left handed and your and your right handed. Oh, the battle of the left. Good. I did, I did, I did, I did You've been hitting it for I weeks. Did, oh. I, didn't, I didn't hit that very good, but that's my left hand and I'm right handed. Man, you have been hitting it for weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Look, Rob. Uh, you're fighting March. You're fighting May 13th, May 13th in London. Friday night. Friday night, May 13th. Friday the 13th, mate. Yeah. I'm lucky for some. Uh, maybe for Daniel Wichell. Yeah, it will uh, definitely will be. And, uh, and what do you think of that as an opponent? We were just speaking about before we came through, as I said. At this stage of my career, when you're fighting guys, you're not getting guys that don't know how to fight or guys that are less than opponent. You get matched relatively the same. Uh, it's, just, see, it's just another fight at the end of the day, isn't it? Uh, the good thing is he comes to fight. Well, with what I've seen, I've watched two of his fights. Uh, comes to fight, they don't think he's going good to back up much. Yeah, good, good win streak. Good win streak, good one streak, good scalp to take. Uh, if you look how my last fight ended, he gets stopped in the second round by Pokes. I'm just excited to get back in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the big fight on that card as well, as well as yours, is obviously the main event. We've got MVP fighting Amosov mm -hmm. for the belt. Yep. Uh, thoughts on that fight? Thoughts on MVP? Is he ready for Amosov? He's a tricky customer, the MVP. I think a lot of people underestimate him. And it's not until we get in there, because who's the last guy who fought Lima? Lima. He's really good. You see him running through World guys. Class, yeah. He gets a grip of people, does his thing. You seen him at London last time with MVP. It was a different story when they had to fight. I think I think people just underestimate, underestimate him. They don't until they get in there. They find the puzzle hard to work out. He's very hard to pin down. He's very hard to get. Now, if Amosov gets a hold of him, I think it's a different game. But he needs to do that. Then he's very elusive. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, mate. Pleasure having you on. Thank you. I believe your score was eight seven two.
We'll double check that. Go on. When you when you're done, there's another little challenge for him, right? He's from Scotland. We all know about the Scottish kiss. I'm no headbutting the head ball. No. no, you're Scottish. I'm no headbutting you, the ball. If you don't, you can't headbutt that very well. You're not even Scottish. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, of course you go. So I believe it was eight seven two. We will double check that, yeah. but it was certainly less than Mark Diacasey. So Rob, you are now second on our leaderboard. Uh, I'm also going to get you to sign the machine in a second, cool. but I think we'll do the uh, the Glasgow challenge. <laughs> are you ready? Okay. Look, tell a man no trust, I don't want beef, man. I just want vibes. Big oh. men like me, no need for the telephone oh, hype. Oh. I got too much getting online. One rule, then then I'm on site. Wrong move, I bet they gon' ride. No oh, need for the telephone right. hype. He's nah, no need yeah. for the snoozing. Yeah. Big whip outside, he's I'm he's cruising. Big stick inside, no losing. Better he's watch he's out for the snake and do this is. Don't ask them who this is. I bet they know where I'm moving in. I bet I show it into a damn. How you eat and then lose again? How you hating my vibes? Why you uh, my dear my Casey called you out. Uh, who are you going to call out to take on the One Punch Challenge? Pillow hands, Don Wooden. Let's see you hit this thing. Ooh, Cage Warriors <laughs> champ, Don Wooden. You've Let's officially been called out by the hammer. Let's see you on the other One Punch Challenge.